Hey everyone, it's your friendly neighborhood reviewer with Intuit Reviews. Welcome back to the neighborhood. Today, we're looking at perhaps the prettiest IAM to ever come through the channel, the Richo and Peacock Spring Day. What makes the spring special is that it's a hand-painted IAM, and it also has a rather unique configuration, consisting of two dynamics and a single balanced armature driver. I particularly like the colorway of it. The swirl of blue and green with hints of gold and yellow, which is very striking. With regard to the fit and finish, the fit is very comfortable. The shell, which is also said to be handmade, is of a nice size that is neither too large nor too small. The shape is ergonomic and the stem is neither too long, too wide, or too shallow. There's also a lip at the end of the stem to hold its tips in place. Others have reported difficulties with the tips remaining secure to the stem, but I've had no such difficulties with my set. The difficulties with my set have to do with the cable and its connection to the IEM. While the two pin connector at the right side of the IEM is at a 90 degree angle, the left connector's two pin rests ajar leaning to the left aggressively. While this might not seem like a big deal, it does affect how the IEM rests to my left ear somewhat. Additionally, while the look, fit, and finish of the cable itself is first class, its sound is not a good match for this particular IEM. The cable variant that I chose was the silver and blue variety. With this cable, the spring is overly aggressive in the mids and can be sharp at times. I found a Tripo and Zoni cable to be a much better match for the spring as it produced much more even sonics. But I'll also point out that a brown copper cable exists as an alternative option for the spring as well. And while it may not look as pretty as the blue variant, it might sound better. But I did not have that cable provided in my package. The spring also comes with a nice brown leather carrying case, a small carabiner, and a variety of assorted tips. While I found all variety of the included tips to be rather nice, the clear silicone tips with the black bore sounded the most balanced and liquid for the spring to me. In my opinion, they were the warmest and the best tonal match for this set. And tip selection was particularly important for the spring, as its signature changed greatly with tips and in general, its tonality lacked warmth and leaned towards a drier, more airy quality. In my mind, these sound like Italian Pinot Grigio tastes. But that bass. The bass is exceedingly well executed, and it's exceptional. With sufficient volume, this is one of the most appropriately dynamic IEMs that I've ever heard. Its dual dynamic setup more than likely contributes to this particular character. The mid bass is punchy and it's most present in this range, but there's also the perfect amount of sub bass that lurks beneath the surface in this IAM. Overall, although it can be emphasized at times, the bass is extremely natural sounding in my book. Like the bass, there is also some upper mid-range forwardness and treble intensity that lurks in the grass and presents itself harshly on some recordings as well. These can test my limits with both regard to its highs and to its mids. Most of the time, mid-range and treble presences are tolerable, but they do sound peaky to my ears on particular tracks, even if they do not really graph as such. I think that the highest peak at 2K and the additional elevation at 4.5k are what draw my attention mostly. Although neither appears like it would be significantly elevated on a graph. Forwardness in the mid-range was particularly evident on certain sources, as I found the spring day to be extremely source dependent. It simply did not sound good on overly stark sources. As a result, Sources such as the THX AAA 789 were not a good fit for this earphone. The FIO BTR 3K and the Gold Note DS10 Plus were my favorite sources for the spring day. Each had their own mild flavors of warmth, which were lent to the Peacocks most favorably. 
In my listening, the soundstage on the spring wasn't particularly wide either, but it did have some good height and some decent depth of field to it, despite some other obvious limitations. One such limitation occurred with regard to the spring's limited sense of expansiveness, which seemed perpetually held back in its scope by the restricted width of the sound field. Having said that, transits were notably terrific. Imaging was also accurate and notably above average, while the auditory plane appeared rather flat as one would expect. Layering capabilities were enjoyable within the space it created, but separation, which was mostly sufficient, did suffer on busier tracks, and sonics did appear to become jumbled with increasing musical complexity. In contrast, vocal clarity and articulation was quite impressive. Although only mid-forward in nature, the Spring Day's vocals were exceptionally precise, well separated, and still appeared isolated from the rest of the mix. If you ever wanted to know exactly what an artist is saying on a particular track, this would be the set to listen to, as it would help you figure it out. Which brings me to my last point on the Spring. Others have claimed that the Spring represents a monitor-like sound outside its mild aggression in the mids and I'd have to say that I actually agree. For the most part, these do deliver sonics that are mostly monitor-like, but also they're true to the recording for better or for worse. That interpretation will be up to you. In the end, I don't want to sugarcoat it. There are some significant compromises to be found here. From the Spring Day's limited soundstage to its tonality challenges and its somewhat mid-forward nature, the Spring did leave me yearning for some additional musicality. Having said that, it's not a bad IAM by any imagination. It's mostly comfortable to wear and comes with a nice accessory package, even if I did not like the acoustics of the included cable variant that I selected. Still, from a sound perspective, Part of me almost regrets purchasing these, but they nevertheless image well, have terrific transients, and have a magically dynamic low end which just sounds right to my ear. The vocal presentation is also executed exceedingly well to boot, and it is nice to have a monitor IEM in my collection. Those who prioritize vocals, a unique low end, and a monitor-like sound may want to take note of the Richo and Peacock Spring Day, even despite its aforementioned misgivings and other drawbacks to consider. And just a reminder guys, at the 1000 subscriber mark, I'll be giving away another set of COS KSC-75s. So make sure to hit that subscribe button, like this video, leave some comments, and follow the neighborhood at all its other access locations, including Instagram, Twitter, the Discord, the blog, or become a Patreon. The Patreon is only $1.50 a month and it will get you access to early written blog reviews from me. And with that, I'm out for now.